Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 64 here at camp. And I'm feeling very, very festive. I'm feeling very warm. Um, even though it is, if you're listening to when this episode drops, it's technically still November, but it's her last goodbye kiss. So we are officially entering the holiday season and I have been so ready for it. I feel like we've been in the holly jolly holiday season for a little bit now. Yeah, our tree's been up for like two weeks already because I was filming a holiday campaign for an ad going out on TikTok and Instagram. So they had to set that tree up. And I feel like last year I really wasn't totally in the holiday spirit and I can already hear myself being annoying listening to Christmas music and it's still November. No, it's not that annoying. Also, really interesting, a little segue here. I wasn't even going to talk about this. I put on the holiday party playlist on Spotify, which was for our Spotify listeners. It was very fun because it didn't just play holiday music. It would play like two Christmas songs and then it would give you like Firework by Katy Perry. And then two more Christmas songs, but like, here's a little Beyonce number. It's like great. I, like I kind of like it mingled in. It doesn't have to be every song, but when it's like a couple here, a couple there, it really keeps my energy up. Yeah. And I feel like this year I am a little sick of the old classic Christmas music, which I usually like, I'm all about. Yeah, really? I'm like, give me something new because that old classic Christmas music, it's going to always be there and I'm going to be into it next year. But right now I'm just like, give me something new. Do you want to explain to our campers how much you hate Kelly Clarkson's Christmas song? <laughs> no, I think you should be honest about that because I'm going to throw you under the bus because the fact that you hate her song. Look, you're laughing because you're a little embarrassed. Okay, I share it. I love Kelly Clarkson. She can really do no wrong. There's an asterisk next to that because what she can do wrong is that song. How does it go? How does it go? Oh, yeah. Baby, some cheer. Snow is falling in the mountain. Yeah, what is it called? Snow is falling? I'm not sure. Snow is falling. Just not in the same. Alone on Christmas, Christmas Day. Day. I don't want to hear it because you know what song that you love? That, By Kelly Clarkson? No, that, no. What oh. holiday song that you love that makes my blood Boil that you always put on. What? I want you to know that I'm, I'm never leaving. Oh, come on. She has a great Christmas album. You she has her been out of this. irritating the fuck out of me for years now. I loved her when she was like the... What was the song that I loved? Chandelier? No, before that. The one that I always talk about, the old one. Titanium? No, before oh, that. You, I had never heard of it before. Ouch. I don't recall. I have done it again be my friend it used to be such a staple on so that you can dance um and i like chandelier but lately she's been just pissing me off she's a little too performative i, don't I love like her, her like singing at the dinner is so me it's oh, so me coded with kathy griffin and lance bass i'm like this is my purgatory here yeah I oh my god my nightmare blunt rotation well anyways this was not our thought starter for today's episode but we are feeling really christmasy um so get ready for some holiday cheer all month long whatever you celebrate we're here just to bring the positive energy up oh my god wait and we're both wearing green i have my green socks on and we probably, if you guys are watching, you're so welcome for the visual pleasure. Yeah, we're giving some holiday flair here at the podcast studio, aka our second bedroom. Bef I'm going to switch gears here. Okay. Hard left, hard right, break, emergency break. <gasps> that was a little Easter egg. That was really good. So Jonathan had a really major, major life moment here, campers. So we really need to gather around the campfire here. Sing a little kumbaya for him and let him tell his tale of what happened after Thanksgiving this year. I sold my very first car. Oh. You know, this isn't like I sold a car for the first time. This was like the first car I ever had, I was still driving and I just sold it for the first time. And how old are you, John? I am 30 years old. No, it, not an age joke. It's just, it's crazy that your first and only ever car you've had for 12 years. Yeah, I learned how to drive in that car. Oh my God. Isn't that crazy? You did everything in that car. I did. All my firsts happened right within that 2010 Hyundai Elantra. Legal, illegal, gray area. It all happened under that gray. What kind of car was she? It was a Hyundai Elantra. It was a 2010. And it was, she was brand spanking new when I got her. And, um, and yes, yeah, she just, you know, took me from point A to point B. And she, I just, you know, I loved her. What was her cause of death? 
God only knows. So she was just sitting at my parents' house because I don't need her right now. Yeah. So I needed to get her out of the way. Like she honestly should have been sold a year ago, probably two years ago, maybe three years ago. She had some issues, but don't we all? I know. It was really funny because for a while she was being garaged at your parents' house, but then she got kicked out of the garage. Yeah. She had a sad goodbye because usually it's like nice when they run to the ground or like, this is not funny at all, but like if an accident happens that the car didn't know. So it's like, <gasps> quick, quick way to go. I know. And then you I start to really, think- You really like let her like, ride out slow so yeah. painful death for her yeah she was like a stinky at the end i was like why does it smell in here like <laughs> Look, you... she wasn't driven for a year she's what did she smell like she's just smelling like stale stink i'm like girl figure it out <laughs> like crack a window <laughs> my god not you bullying her on her final way out also let's talk about how she just refused to start okay so she had this issue years before there was a battery issue don't know what it was but every time i would try to start her she i would just have to jump it and this was before, I know if you have it sitting there and it's not starting for a while, of course you're going to have to jump it because yep. the battery just kind of dies. Mm. But this was like, I would be at work, driving to work, come out to my car and it just, she wouldn't start. I would have to leave her there over the weekend. Yeah. The more I like talk about it, the more I'm like, why did I just hold on to her for so long? I think because you never had to do that transaction. Like it's your first goodbye of a vehicle. I There's some campers out here that I'm sure are still on their first car and some campers that can't even count how many cars they've had. It's like, it's all kind of dependent on the personality. And I think she was very reliable. She gave you so much. And after 12 years of owning her, she still ended with just a hair over a hundred K. Yeah, miles. not yeah, no, not even. It was ninety eight thousand miles because I had Unbelievable. her when I was in college. I lived in Center City, so I didn't drive her at all. So she was kind of just sitting at home. But yeah, she had a lot of issues, and um, and I'm sad to see her go. And you drove her like a grandma. I did. You know what? I drive everywhere like a grandma. I obey the law. I'm a law abiding citizen. Can you tell everybody how it went when you dropped her off at the place that bought the car? Okay, so we had to jump her to get her there, right? And I'm like, I cleaned her out. She was looking really good. I found my very first Pokemon card was also in the car. So that was fun to find. And I was like, okay, she's going to be on her best behavior. She mm. drove beautifully on the way there. Um, I go into webuyanycars.com. Tyrell helped me out. Thank you, Tyrell. And when he goes out, he's like, let's take a look at the car. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. We go outside. She doesn't start. I'm like, this is so embarrassing. We're off to a really bad start. There goes like a decent amount of money that I could have got in my pocket. They like take off instantly $500. You're like, yeah. goodbye. Yeah, pretty much, essentially. Um, And then he sits in the car for a little while. He's checking. The windows were working. The power windows were working great. She did something. And the radio did not. I did. I hit a bump on my oh. way over and the radio went kaput. <laughs> <laughs> she just like and also i had a cd player i didn't even have a u there was no bluetooth there was no no cord it was just like you listen to the podcast in your airpods out of your phone or you listen to um to nsync on the cd player because that's what we had yeah so he he's doing his thing he's walking around they like punch it with the little pen i didn't know what he was doing i wanted to ask him because i've seen it on tiktok where people just walk around the cars with a little magnet thing I'm like what are they doing what, what are they mean? prodding i don't know it looks like a little it looks like a little pen and he's just jabbing the side of the car it's like magnetic i think i, I have no idea what it was doing i wanted to ask him but i was like i was already in too deep i was like i'm gonna give him space i'm gonna let him do his thing um but yeah she she's she's salt how much did you get for her $1,900. And you know what? $1,900 richer you are today. Exactly. Hey, lunch was on May. Yeah. Hey, afterwards, Papa Jay did treat me to a delicious lunch and he bought our Christmas supplies at Michael's. So you really did treat us, but you don't need it though because we have my car and um, we live here. So we, we're, we, we can share a car. And also... I shouldn't be dry. It was, so it was dangerous. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it was very dangerous. Back in 2021, I was having issues with it. I, it drove seven hours all the way to go see you. And then I went to go, I stayed with you for maybe a long weekend or whatever it was, what have you. And then I go to leave and you're going to your parents' house. My car start. No, we had to jump it. That's what it was. We jumped my car. We're driving home. You're driving to your parents' house behind me. And what did you see? Your car like jetted left to the right, like jerk, jerk. And then you just like sped over right to the breakdown lane and bra and, and break. And I was like, oh my God, I'm right behind you. So I like followed you obviously to the breakdown lane. It was scary. I don't know how it's possible, but my battery died while I was driving and my power steering went and I almost crashed on the highway. Yeah. And there was a lot of cars on the highway too, but you handled it well. 
you helped me out. I had no idea what, like, I was freaking out. I was shaking. I was crying. I was shitting. I was farting. And you were like, all right, let's handle it. You handle it. You came to my rescue. You really did. You were like very poised about it and like nonchalant. And I was like, this man is, he's my hero. He's my everything. I took him to TGI Fridays, guys. That's where you go when things are hard. Yeah. Head to your local Fridays. Mm -hmm. You get the green, the fried green beans. That's literally what we did. I love that. (laughs) They were not that good. Well, she was good for what she was. And... It's time to say goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. And I was honestly a little emotional when we were pulling out. I will insert a video here of my final goodbye. She looks a little naked without her license plate. I hadn't seen that part of her before. So I was like a little like, ah, you know? I know. She's just like out in the elements. Yeah, you know, she already didn't look like mine. Oh, but you know what was still in the back when I sold it? What'd you keep there? The dance of Nancy. Oh my God, campers will understand. You love Dave Matthews. You love to be that little creepy dance and Nancy. Yeah, she was still in the back. It's one part that I'll miss of her, but yeah. Do you think your next car you'll get another Dancing Nancy sticker? No. Oh, she's done. I think I'm done. I think I'm good. (laughs) Into me. Into me. So since you're so shocked that I still had my first car, do you want to walk us through your, your roster? Oh my God, don't call them a roster because that makes them sound like they don't matter. Yeah, my car. So my first car was a 1999 Volvo S70 specifically. My Nana always drove Volvo, so I always wanted to get a Volvo. I worked six months to buy that car. I bought it myself, completely cash. And then I told her in six months. Okay. So I only had it for six months. I I actually only think I had it for... I bought her in November. I told her in April. So... It was Yikes. quick. Yeah, I told it her on 140 going southbound. Um, hit the hit the rail. Like I hit the um, soft shoulder. My car tire popped, and then I sped into a tree. Jesus. Yeah, uh, I was okay. Okay. Yeah. I was listening to Jason Mraz. Some of you campers will remember that episode that we talked about that. Um, yeah, I was okay. So was that when you were like freshly 16? Yes, okay. I I just turned seventeen. Uh, I just turned seventeen. Yeah. Um. God didn't want this little gig on yet. He said he still has work to do. So he blessed me. Only that for the scratch on my chinny chin chin, and that I remember calling my parents, sobbing that I told them my car, and I looked up, and that's when I saw my first ever shooting star. Really? I was kind of pissed. I was like, "How is it now?" Because I used to always look for them. I never saw them in my entire life. I've seen quite a few now, but okay. that was the first one I ever saw. So did you wish? No, I was too preoccupied. I was bleeding. Yeah, there was a lot coming on. I was bleeding. And then I downgraded to a 1997 Volvo 850 Maroon. Um, so she was only two years younger than me. Oh, yeah, um, so a we Maroon were, girl. We would have been in the same co- high school together. You would probably would have been friends. She was so funny. Her paint was peeling. I loved her so much. I had it for years. It was so bad. The, the roof of the Volvo, like the, the fabric roof was dropping down. Mm-hmm. So I had to take a staple gun and staple her to the inside. Yeah. Smoked my first ever blunt in there. Oh. I did. Um, I got pulled over in her quite a few times. I drove to Montreal in her. Wow, she's yeah. an international biddy. She was. I had her for quite a few years. Yeah, after her, she kind of just died. She just like she just stopped working okay. completely. So I then bought my first ever car by myself in 2000, and I think 15. She was a 2011 Ford Fiesta. Any, so now we're on car three. Yes. Okay. So any Fiesta drivers out there? I love cheesy Fiesta potatoes. They were a, that was a piece of shit car. It was like driving a go-kart. I hated that car. And I got the worst deal on it ever. I had no one go with me. I did it completely by myself. And I think I got scammed. I paid like $11,000 for her. She had 30,000 miles on it. She gave me drama every single day. I put so much work into her. She had crank windows. Um, oh, I know. And I used to defend it to my friends that make fun of it being like, if we ever go into a body of water, yeah, I'll be able to save myself. But it's like, how often are you driving into ponds? Hopefully not frequently. Exactly. But that yeah. was my only saving grace with her. She was fun. I feel like I did a lot of growing up in her. That's the car you had when we met. Yeah, we were. Yeah, but you never actually were in her. Because mm. by the time that you finally came to see me, I had just bought in the car that I have now, uh, my 2020 Mazda CX-5. Love this car so much. It's a great car. Ha- I'm going on year four with her. She's never given me anything. And when she does, that'll be okay because it's like it's bound to happen. But she's just been so good. I heated mean, seats. Yeah, heated seats, which I'm a hot person, so I don't use them quite frequently. I have a sunroof. I really wanted that. I don't really use it, to be honest. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Yeah, she's my fourth car. 
Um, and I'll have it for a while, but I just can't believe that I've had four and you only had one. Yeah. I feel a lot of most people have just been like rotating through cars. I feel like that's the normal thing to do. Probably the safest thing to do. Cause had I not, I, you know, but I, also I wasn't in an accident and her, she was in one accident that I didn't know was like reported. So here, let me set the scene. So it was 2017 and I was asleep. We were at the shore house and my, I was, it's at my uncle's shore house and he had bought out the plot of land that was next door and he was building a new house next door. So my dad comes into the room and wakes me up at seven something in the morning. I'm hungover because we had the night of our lives the night before. And he's like, the police are here and they're looking for you. I was like, Oh, Oh my God. Like, what am I supposed to do with that information? So then I run downstairs and one of the construction guys had hit my car. Oh, a little fender bender. Yeah. Was there damage? There was. A lot? It was like one of the little construction like scooper things. Oh, so it got hit with a giant metal bucket. Yeah. Yeah. So that was unfortunate. Yeah. Accidents suck. But anyways, campers, let us know if you had a car. Let us know what your first car was. I always think that's so funny. Cause it's like my, my second car technically was 15 when I got her. She, I gave her new life, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, let us know your first car and if you miss her and how long you had her for. Um, and let's get into today's episode. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to morning announcements campers. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might've missed that we want to share with you so you can spread it like wildfire. Even though we do not condone wildfires here at Camp Shady Birch, protect our forests. Councilor Jonathan, <laughs> will you start us off today, please? Yes, of course. So this is actually coming from a blog post. Is that an art? Is that a news source? Then? Yeah, I guess. What's the blog called? Uh, so it's actually here. Let me let me just get into it. Okay. So Bloomsy Box, have you heard of them? No. Okay, I know. It sounds like kind of crazy. It's a floral arrangement delivery service slash subscription service. Oh, look, Urban Stems. Yes, but I, I'm not quite sure what you would need. Well, I guess if people like fresh flowers in their house, that's why you would get like a subscription service. Oh my God. I don't know why I don't do that. I think I would love to have f fresh flowers in my house every single week. Oh my God, Christmas gift. I know what I'm getting you. Oh, well, I want, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That seems like a lot of money, though. I don't know if you should spend it on that. Okay, we'll chat about it. Maybe He's we getting could... me a toothbrush, everybody. Woo! <laughs> An electric one. I need a good one. Maybe if someone at bloomsybox.com is is watching. <gasps> Stop it. You can put in a good word for us. Bloomsybox.com. Love you so much. Bloomsybox.com. I read your blog every day. So this blog post <laughs> title is Cozy Up and Cash In. Become our first Hallmark Christmas movie reviewer. Oh my God. I love stuff like this. Okay. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I, I feel like I just have to read the top of it just so you get the gist of what they're saying. Um, are you the ultimate Hallmark Christmas movie buff? Then we need to talk. The countdown to Christmas is fast approaching. So we at Bloomsy Box want to settle the debate. What's the greatest piece of Hallmark holiday cinema ever created? To find out, we're looking for one special Christmas movie maven to watch and rate 12 Hallmark Christmas movies in 12 days. So um, according to this post, they created a, quote, ironclad rating system designed to stand up to the scrutiny of even the most steadfast of Scrooges. So I don't quite know what that, that means. I think they just wanted to make sure that like the list is like good and it's, it's definitive. I guess. So the winner, are you ready? Are you curious to know what the winner will receive? Yes. So the winner will receive $2,000 cash, an ample supply of Ghirardelli hot chocolate, two pairs of ultra fuzzy Ugg socks, a one-year subscription of Peacock, and a 12-month flower subscription um, from Bloomsy Box. This is fantastic. All to watch 12 movies. God, even the Peacock subscription is enough. Basically, the people who are watching it, they're going to be asked to score upon the following criteria. Number one. The festivity factor. Was it Christmassy enough? Number two, predictability quotient. Did you see where the movie was going? I feel like every Hallmark movie you see where it's going. That's like the point of them. I think people like to know what they're getting into with them. Yeah. And I think the ones, the 12 that they chose, they were like, there's a twist. 
I'm like, is it a twist or do we all do we all know that the city girl is going to stay at the country? I love a Christmas twist. You give me a Christmas movie with a twist. That's what I'm looking for. But you're not going to get that on Hallmark. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't really watch Hallmark movies. Yeah, we don't. We should. We kind of like corny movies like that. My mom is obsessed with Hallmark Christmas movies. She's like obsessed. I think she's seen them all. If you look at all the movie covers next to each other, they're all like literally the same. Yeah, they have the man in green and the woman in red. Yeah, obviously. Okay, so chemistry check. Um, you know, obviously, are you believing it? Are you buying into it? That's a really good factor because I think even the corniest of movies can be saved if I believe that the characters are actually in love. I like that factor. So the last two pieces of criteria is the tearjerker test. Oh, a good one. And the replay value. Are you willing to implement this into your Christmas holiday tradition? That might be the most important because there's so many movies that I've seen lately that I feel like are not rewatchable. Like, I'm okay that I watched it once. I don't need, know if I need to watch it again. Yeah, we did really enjoy the um, the Dolly Parton Christmas in Christmas Town Square, Times we, Square. We only watched that one because, ironically, we think it's funny. I don't think it's supposed to be as funny as we think it is. Dolly Parton's Christmas in the Square on Netflix is the worst slash best Christmas movie to have ever been made. Every man in town is gay man, flamboyantly, but they're playing... I don't know, all American men, straight men, clearly. It's just, it's funny. It's a lot of dancing. Um, what's her name's in it? Christine Barinsky. Oh, yeah. She's so good at She's it. She's so good. She loves a Christmas movie. Dolly Parton is playing, at one point, um, a poor person in the square, and her, like, tattered, like, Rat weathered tail. clothing <laughs> is literally, like, cinched around her body. Like, it's tailored, like, rags. I'm like, that is actually so fierce, Dolly. I'm going to be honest. It was a hard watch for the first like 25 minutes. And then I'm so glad we kept watching it because it just got so crazy and funny. But the first 20 minutes were like, they were tough to watch. There was one part where they implemented like the crafty, the craft service table, like for the cast and the crew was on, was in the movie. And I'm like, that's clearly like for the cast and the crew. (laughs) Yeah. They just, they just went, they don't care. They said we have four hours to film it. Let's get it done. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I'm not going to read you. I can put them up on the screen here, but I'm not going to read you all the titles. But the one title I am interested in is Ghosts of Christmas Always. No clue what it's about, but it's the one that pops off the page for me. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, So they are taking applications, but they do close December 3rd, 2023 at midnight. Okay, campers, get on it. If you're on time with this podcast, you have time to apply. And I feel like we must have some homework loving campers here. Oh my God, how cool would that be if one of our campers was the one who who did this and got to win and watch all the movies? I know. And you also get like a good like lump sum of like prizes, I think, too. And it's truly not that difficult. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much my story. I was just excited by that. Because it's like, why not just get paid two thousand dollars and all those goodies to watch Christmas movies? And need a lifetime or a year supply of free flowers. Exactly. So, what have you got for us? Mine's kind of interesting. Um, so, the New York Times wrote this article this week, and it was called "In This Atlanta Suburb, Teens Taste Freedom at Ten Miles Per Hour." Isn't that weird? The article was written by Rick Rojas. And I was like, wait, why is there a cover of golf carts on this? So the town is called Peachtree City, Georgia. Any campers from Peachtree City, Georgia? I'm sure a Georgian camper would know about this um, town already. But Peachtree City, Georgia is um, a.k.a. Golf Cart City, essentially. So okay. stay with me, campers, here. So um, the town is located in an Atlanta suburb and is like any other place. And as I'm reading this, like, kind of article to you and talking about this town, at any point, feel free to pause this and search Peachtree City, Georgia on TikTok because it's going to confirm everything I'm talking about. So they have 100 miles of golf cart only paved paths. So um, if there's one thing that defines Peachtree City, it's the golf carts. The city has roughly 13,000 households and some 11,000 registered carts. Its logo, a peach and a golf cart. (laughs) Population, 35,000. So basically there's one golf cart for every three people in the city. I love that. The entire city is obsessed with their golf carts. They go to school, shopping centers, there's three lakes, over the highway, through tunnels, and they all connect to major roads. Kids starting at 13 can legally drive a golf cart with a parent or guardian, but once they turn 15 with a driver's permit, they can go anywhere in town by themselves. So there's these two local high schools and there's like 400 to 500 golf carts in the parking lot at all times of the high school, usually the freshmen. 
Mm, Isn't mm-hmm. that crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. But honestly, super convenient. It's like very fun. I love these videos on TikTok that we'll post like on, we'll post it on our, the YouTube video of this and we'll post it on like the Instagram slideshow. But people just tool around in these private paths all across town and their own little golf carts. I think it's so fun. God, I fucking love a golf cart. I know. We just drove one at Friendsgiving last mm-hmm. week. Sam has a golf cart and I got to drive it. And I had a grand old time. I think it's a great way to get around town. So do you know like how this is, was it like a tradition that started or they were just kind of like the kids were young and they were like, hey, this town is really like spread out and we don't want to have to keep asking our parents to take us places. So can we just drive a golf cart? I have no idea, but a hundred miles of paved golf cart paths. That's crazy. That seems targeted. Yeah. That seems specific. Like that was definitely like a thought out like decision. And it's so big there that, a lot of the houses have individual golf cart stalls for oh, like, like a garage in the garage. Like when you pull up to a store, they have golf cart only parking mm. little things. You're allowed to take them through the drive through. They're kind of like that at Myrtle beach. Yeah. It, it's not that extreme. Yeah. But. I think that's why they probably have like seen it work in different other like kind of beachy towns. And they're like, let's make it our big thing. So can you, is it like well lit at night? Like, are we giving street lights? Oh my God. You should see the, the video of the tunnel. When it goes under the highway, like the tunnel under the highway, it's all lit with purple lights. Okay, so now that I just sold my car, I know what I'm going to get myself into next time. Yeah, but you know what a new golf cart kind of goes for? No. Like 9K. Really? At that point, just buy a car. And there is roads campers. Like, it's not like golf cart only. These are just like specific. They have golf cart only roads, but like there is obviously no more roads ever. I'd like that for the safety of everyone involved. Yeah, and it's really funny when I was like going through the TikTok comments, a lot of people are like, tell me you work for Delta without telling me you work for Delta. And I was like, what does this mean? Everyone's like, oh my God, this is so Delta. I'm like, guys, what are they talking about? So Delta Airlines, they're world headquarters is in atlanta at the oh. airport the Atlanta, the atlanta airport is 24 miles away from peach tree city and on a saturday at 3 50 you can get there in 31 minutes on a golf cart or a normal car oh no in a normal car imagine on their google maps it has a golf cart like i wonder setting. if it does no that would be too specific well i don't know if you have like the golf like, because you're not driving on the road, you're driving on a different road. It's going in a different direction. I don't know. I think this is really cool for the kids, mm-hmm. the high schoolers. Like, that's so cool. Guys, we're going to show a, a picture of what the parking lot looks like at the high school. It's insane. I've never seen so many golf carts in my life, like rows and rows and rows of golf carts. And it gives them a little bit more freedom. And and they think that it gives the kids a little bit more mature maturity yeah. to be on their own. But um, there has been some accidents, obviously. Oh, I'm sure with more golf carts come more accidents. Yeah. And they can't really regulate the speed of a golf cart because it kind of just only goes like go there's no like levels to it yeah how fast do like does it your run-of-the-mill golf cart go 10 to 15 miles an hour that's not that fast well there'll be po- there's police on the paths well yeah there has to be they have their atvs oh and all the policemen wear booty shorts and they have these crazy mustaches and they Shut all wear up. aviators and they're all hot and they get off and they're like how fast were you going no they don't have that but they should Three times more DUIs are given on golf carts than they are in actual cars in Peachtree. So you cannot drink and drive in your golf cart. The cops will find out. Okay, that was going to be my next question because I see some people who just kind of take a little road soda and, you know, head out on the golf cart because it is in a car. Uh, Well, the thing is with this golf cart culture is that it's more so like actually a part of the day to day versus like you're not on a golf course. You're not tooling Taking around a joy the, ride. the beach, the beach mm-hmm. path, or like the the cabins. Like this is truly a way of life there. And as some of you may know, Camp Shady Birch does have counselor registered golf carts. And if you see me with a red solo cup and I'm in the passenger seat, look away. Let it let it let it go. Okay, I'm not always on the on the clock for you campers. But if we were in Peachtree City, Georgia, we'd have to make sure that we were not drinking and driving. Yes, obviously. So if there's any campers out there that are local to the city, let us know. And please go search it on TikTok. It was like actually a bug out. I hope I'm doing it justice because I was like, wait, this whole city runs on golf carts. It's kind of fun. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. So you know I'm like a fact-driven person, right? 
Yeah, you love you you fucking love Google. Listen, I love Google. I love Wikipedia. I love facts. I love fun facts that um, most people don't know. <laughs> so where is this going? Because it's adding a lot of love. So the other day we were with my brother, and I had just learned that Jack Antonoff was in the band Fun. I was like really excited too because I just learned it, and it just kind of like blew my mind because I only knew the the lead vocalist of Fun. So I go, I'm like, Chris, did you know Jack Antonoff was in Fun? And he goes, Yeah. And my world crumbled. Oh, because it was like, Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. So if I'm really excited and I'm telling you a fact that you already know, that pisses me off. The least you could do is appease me. Like I need, I have that moment. And just like knowing that I am the reason, the catalyst for you to have that new piece of knowledge is just, I'm elated by it. So the least you could do is pretend that you didn't know. Maybe he didn't mean to come across that way. No, I don't think he did. But did it hurt your feelings? And it hurt my feelings. And I know that it wasn't his fault. I'm just like, damn, I wish. One, I wish he didn't know that so mm. I could have been the one to tell him. And two, oh, I'm last to the party. Everybody else knew. Well, I didn't know. And when you told me I didn't know, so you really got, I gave, did I give you a good enough reaction? Yes. I, guys, I jumped up. I, shaked my, I shook my tits. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And they started crying and screaming and I called everyone I knew. Because I knew that's what you wanted me to do because that's what you like in a reaction. You want an over-the-top reaction. That's the bare minimum that anybody could do when I tell them a piece of information. To be fair, I think you're not used to it because you carry around a wealth of incredibly obscure information. I wouldn't say useless. I would just say obscure. <laughs> and I think you love to share it and you love to sprinkle it in. So I think you're just not used to people wanting one-upping you. But your brother's really into musical trivia. So That's that would so make true. sense for him to already know that. Yeah. And you want to know how I found out? I don't how? know. I don't know why. TikTok. Oh, you know what? I think it was because, no, we were listening to Pink and then she has the song with fun. We're obsessed with Pink, you guys. You know that. And I clicked, I was like, what, like, what is fun up to? Like, what are they doing? So I clicked it. And at the top of their Spotify thing, it's, there's the picture of, of all the band members, the bandmates, if you will. And there he is on the drum, the drum kit, the drum set. Do you think Pink knows? I don't know. Someone should tell her. So if Pink, I'm assuming Pink knows. And if you told Pink that and she said, I already know that, what would you think? Would you be pissed at her? Yeah, I'd probably would be Would you pissed. hit her? No. Uh... What if she hit you? I might um, cut the wire on her string that she flips through the air with. Oh, my God. Uh, your mom brought it up to me at Thanksgiving Pink. And we were walking in the house. And she about Pink or whatever. And I said, so what? Uh, I'm still a rock star. But I said it. And I was like, oh, my God. Is your mom catch up on those lyrics? Or did you think I just said to her, so what? I'm, I'm still, still a rock star. star. I'm like, I got in the car. And I was like, wait, was that? Did she get that? I don't know. No, she probably I'm anxious. Because she... I was like, that sounds, if you, if she didn't get that, that just sounded rude. Yeah. So she says, about Pink, I was like, so, so what? what? I'm, I'm still, still a rock, rock star. star. As you're leaving their house on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm panicking about it again. Panicking about it again. No, she probably knew. It's like sometimes when you're really excited to show me a TikTok and I've already seen it, I just don't tell you because you're just so excited by it. And I know it means a lot to you to show it to me. Oh, you can tell me. I wouldn't care about that. No, because a lot of our algorithms are the same. And if I do it, I'm going to be telling you that I've seen 60 to 70% of the videos that you end up showing me. I'd rather have you say that than pretend to laugh because your lack of laughter is almost more offensive to me than you just being honest and saying, I already saw that. Because now I'm like, wait, why isn't he laughing at this? But you can't possibly give a genuine reaction a second time i guess i could no you're take not take two i'm an actor yeah. hello i went to sweet life as zach and cody camp you need <laughs> you need to be real with me he be sometimes real. i'm bringing the heat and guess what when you show me something i've already seen i tell you right to your face you have already seen it i've already and seen i know it. how it feels i'm cut and dry baby okay i'll give it to you like it is so when i give you a real laugh you know it's robust and you know it's true robust I love describing laughter as like th the same way that you could describe a tomato. Oh, robust. Ro oh yeah, because you're no, you're thinking more of a you're thinking of a, a pizza sauce. You're yeah. thinking of Domino's. Just say her name. I'm thinking of Domino's. Say her name out loud. How would you say ro like what? What other word would you use for robust? Ooh, strong. Really earthy. Oh, I would say I would say earthy. I would say. Um, like party flavor. Oh, party flavor. That's really good. I love thinking of different words for other things. When I was growing up, I had a, I had a chortle phase when I was like 13. What the fuck is that? It's a really heavy laughter. 
So I'd be like, oh, that made me chortle. Because I was really looking to be different there. That's oh, pick me energy to say chortle. Yeah. But I used it for quite a few years. Chortle. Um, but it's fun. It's adjectives are fun, campers. Let us know. <laughs> you open up that thesaurus, which I still can never figure out how to spell. Oh, I can't spell restaurant ever. Yo. That's a hard one for me. Every time I sound it out, always wrong. Same with um, relief sometimes. Relief. Sometimes receive. I'm always like I before E except after C, but then like what about this one? Hmm, I don't know. I really just struggle with um, restaurant. Restaurant's a hard one for sure. Going back to your take a hike here, would it have been easier on the ears, easier on the heart if your brother had said, oh, I, I actually already knew that? Or is just the act of someone knowing something before you really painful? No, it... <laughs> I, so if he would have said yes, and also here's another fun fact, I would have been like, "Holy shit! Like, thank you." Now I feel like blessed and not stressed. Like that was incredible. That was robust. But to be met with a yeah, I knew that. That just felt like sure. well, where's the where's the conversation go from there? I feel shut down. I feel sad. I feel upset. This isn't about my brother personally. This is just like anybody that I say something to that already knows what I'm saying is just. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. I think your love language is the sharing of knowledge. You like to share. Yeah. You're a sharer. I'm a sharer. Did you know Ashley Simpson and Jessica were siblings? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take a hike? My take a hike is Raymore and Flanagan's return policy. Raymore and Flanagan, step up. You're on the hot seat and I'm pissed. Um, So we're going to go down a little... I'm setting up for this one. We're going to talk about what happened the day before Thanksgiving. Okay. Also, okay, this is a safe space and we're we're flirting with Karenism here. I'm not flirting with Karenism at all. I know my return policy. They were assholes. I'm not a Karen and this is not a Karen story. No, you're okay. You're right. So I'm going to call out bad business when I see bad business. And it's not the business per se. It was the employees on. Hmm. And I this is my take a hike and I don't want it to be taken away from me. I'm not. Okay. So I bought a mattress 87 days previous to this visit that was too firm. And that's on me. I always believe I like a very firm mattress, which I thought I did. But I think what we both agreed on was that it wasn't breaking in like we thought it was. It's slate, essentially. It is rock hard, my mm, lower back. I wouldn't go as far as say that it is a stone mattress, but I, it is a little firmer. I'm pretty achy. I'm pretty achy for that to be a new mattress. And the guy who sold us the mattress, his name was Tony. He was fabulous. We love him. This has nothing to do with Tony. Tony said to me when we bought the mattress that, hey, like you have a 120 day sleep guarantee. They call it the mattress comfort guarantee for 120 days. So you can shop your mat. Oh, this I'm going to stop for a second and read exactly what this, this return policy says on the website. Our mattress comfort guarantee is now 120 days. Shop for your new mattress with confidence, knowing that you'll benefit from great sleep for years to come. Plus, okay, I'm not going to do the next ones. It's like just saying that like rest assured with our extended 120 day comfort guarantee with our platform protection pr plan, you're, if you're not completely satisfied with your mattress, we'll help you select a new one. Okay. So I was like, let's give it a month. Let's give it two months. It's going to break down. It's going to break down. It's going to feel more comfortable. It never does. When we were in California two weeks ago, I got a phone call from the Tony himself checking back in, being like, hey, Zach, just want to know how that mattress is going. I was like, Tony, I've been thinking about you a lot lately. I hate our mattress. It never broke in. I really want to return it. And he was like, no problem, Zach. You can show up to any Raymore and Flanagan anywhere around and just tell a manager and they will walk you through the process of exchanging your mattress. Like, that's why we have the guarantee. And I was like, Tony, I feel terrible. Does this mean you're not going to get your commission? And he was like, don't worry about me. And I do feel bad because that means Tony, Tony is a real loser in this because Tony didn't get the commission on our mattress and he was great. But what about if it's an exchange? It's like a void. It voids. Um, I know I feel guilty about this. I really do. But like uh, at the end of the day, like that's just that's sales. Mm -hmm. That's what Michael Scott would say. He'd be like, that's sales, baby. So we go not only to Raymore and Flanagan to return the mattress, we go to the exact same location that we purchased it because it was back home where you live mm -hmm. and we were there for Thanksgiving. So now I'm going to tell you step by step why I had a bad experience because this is our podcast and I can do this. We walk in the doors and I told you before we even walked in. That's what I was going to say, say before before we even walked in. You were like, I hate this. I feel awkward already doing this. I just like want this to be over with before it even starts. And I agree. It's like 
nobody wants to go through the process and it's like awkward and it's like just figure it out you know because i knew they were going to give us a hard time even though it's plastered on giant signs throughout the store 120 day sleep guarantee and this was day 87 okay we're not even really near we're we're just about to hit that like top 75%. You know what I mean? Like we still have more than 25% left of this guarantee. Mm -hmm. So we walk in and there's a guy at the front door and there's a lot of commotion in there. Not a lot of, not a lot of shoppers, but there's people kind of like shuffling furniture around. And I go there and he's like, well, I'm like, hi, we need to exchange our mattress. And he instantly says, well, do you have an appointment? And I'm like, no, Tony said I could just show up and whatever. He's like, well, she's busy right now with somebody already. I'm not feeling very warm with this interaction. I still am a customer here. I've spent thousands of dollars on this mattress to be explicit. Okay. Don't talk to me like that. And I said, all right, we'll wait because now I'm going to match your energy, bitch. You want to be rude to me? No, don't worry, baby. I'll wait. I will sit on this couch until she is ready because that is my right. And that's my return policy. So he's like, okay, well, you can go upstairs and go look around mattresses. So we do. Luckily we found one, but like they really were tearing that place up. It wasn't busy in there. It was just like only busy with like furniture resets, but like, okay, if you can't handle working, then close the store down. Like, it's not that serious. Like, I'm pretty sure your team has it handled. Like, do you really need to be like f overseeing these people move rooms to rooms? Like yeah. the management team there, like the employees got it. So we shop around for 30 minutes. We find a mattress. We like it. She's not finding us, this manager. I'm like, whatever. Let's go back downstairs and we'll just sit in like the common area, like on the sofas until she's ready. I'm not rushing her. I know I don't have an appointment. I'll wait for her. We get down there. What is she doing? She's shooting the shit with the guy that knew we were already there. I'm like, what are y'all waiting for us to come back down? He said, you're going to come find us. And I'm not being rude. I just feel like they're avoiding us at this point. Yeah, they were. Because then they both saw us and they were like, oh. So she comes over exasperated, like, ugh. And then I'm like, uh, hi, we're here to return a mattress. She goes, when did you buy it? I said, end of August. She goes, nope, 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 nope. Can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. And then I have to remind her of their return policy that is plastered all over the like the place. So it's like, they're just, I just think like my big take hike here is that like, unless you know your return policy, these salespeople will try to like, scam you mm -hmm. like how are you going to tell you a manager here and don't know your return policy when it's written on every mattress also they both made us feel like horrible about like even existing on the premises like the guy he was mumbling and then he was just kind of a dick and then when she came over even after she was like when did you do it and you you said the date that we got the mattress she just like shook her head and gave us a nope, look that was like nope. shit out of luck like she at one point without she didn't even, say like, anything without even like looking into our like case it was just like instantly shutting down until i told her her return policy that she should know because she's a manager here and then she's like oh you're right I'm like, okay. okay, but don't worry. While she was going upstairs to look at mattresses with us, she dropped her iPad, the work iPad, and it shattered. Oops, Oops. that sucks for karma. Um, and and it's just funny because even as we were going downstairs and filling out the paperwork to exchange the mattress, which is my right because I am a customer and this is the return policy that you promised, I even continue to apologize for being inconvenient when at the end of the day, like, it's really not that busy. Like you're just being rude to everybody here. But I was just like, oh wait, I'm sorry. Like I, I was like, I'll swear I'll never return anything ever again. Like I just want to get the right mattress because I'm like, my back hurts from this. And she says to me, she goes, it's fine. Just don't ever do it again when there's one manager on before a holiday. She literally said that you're not even, you are not even being drama. That is literally what came out of her mouth. She's like, just don't do it again when, how are we supposed to know that? I'm like, if you're that busy, then shut the store down. Don't be open because God forbid someone needs to work with a manager. Yeah, she broke her iPad because she had a bad attitude. And I just like, don't think it's right to have return policies and then to fight the consumer on it. So my take a hike really is just bad return policies. As a consumer, just know your rights because they will try to scam you and be like, nope, you can't do it even though you can. So you have to really know what you're doing in order to get what's rightfully yours. Like spend thousand dollars on a mattress. You want the right one. And it's like, I'm not doing this because I want to do this. You think I wanted to like pay for it on delivery free and have people, random people in my house taking a mattress up? No, it's because it's like, I want, I need the right mattress. Right. And it's, yeah, it's just, not, I don't think I'm being a Karen here. No, you're not being a Karen. I think I was just dealing with really bad customer service. And I am just like, I think it's where I grew up. I think it's the way that I'm being raised. Like if you're rude to me, I can't help but be rude back. And then for me to continue to bite my tongue and apologize and for her to like dig the nail in deeper and be like, just never come back before a holiday when there's one manager on. If I get that survey, oh, I will be a Karen there. I will. 
And I will write in the consumer box, Tony was great. Your manager on staff made me uncomfortable. And so did the guy at the suit at the front of the store. I don't care. Why are we walking on eggshells around people? I don't care. Like, get a different job if you hate it. I'm sorry. Also, we were trying to get the one mattress, and it was like that we were going to have to get money back because of how much it was. Like, the ma new mattress that we liked was cheaper, and they couldn't give us a refund. It was like, she said, you can't get it back in a gift card. You have to use the balance now. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, I'm sorry, Miss Raymore, Miss Flanagan. The interior design is not working for me in here. It is stuck in 2005. It's rustic. I feel like there's roosters everywhere in the home decor. Like, I'm not trying to buy a weird mirrored lamp. Like, what am I supposed to spend the next $500 on? Yeah, just if don't be rude to customers and don't, like, give an attitude before someone else gives you an attitude. Like, it's not my fault that you're working and it's not my fault that this is the return policy. Like, just do what you got to do. We all got to do what you got to do. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle campaign. Over. Welcome back, campers, to Camper Crush of the Week. I just hit my vape off camera because I had to decompress for a minute. I really went in on Raymore and Flan again, and I didn't mean to. I just, I felt, I felt disrespected. I didn't like that. But we're leaving that in the last segment. I have, I'm Zen Wen now. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. What? Not to bring the last segment back into this, but somebody commented on the last episode too, where we didn't do the thing where we're supposed to, we keep forgetting to put oh. them together. Okay, let's do it really quick before we get into it. Okay, would you rather have somebody, I think we can both agree, we would rather just have somebody say we knew the fun fact that you were about to tell us. Then deal Rain with the manager at Raymore and Flanagan. Yeah. No. I never want to see her again. And if I do, it's on site. So hmm. I was supposed to leave that in the last segment. And here I am. I'm going to hit my vape again. Okay. Because this is not good. Okay. Wait, welcome back, everybody, to <laughs> Camper Crush of the Week. This is the part of the show where we share what we're loving on, what we're kissing, what we're snogging. Really, who deserves the camp badge of honor and excellence in performance and joy? Um, is that all encompassing of what you think this segment is, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, it's also robust. Robust. And I'm craving Domino's pizza. And we've already talked about how they've done it so bad here, but like, I would love a Domino's pizza right now. I've had pizza for the past four days. Don't, don't do this. Because if you could, you would every single day. Yeah, I would. You, I've never once offered or suggested pizza to you and you've been like, no, I don't want that. You owe, you could live off pizza. Do you want to get pizza later? Maybe. We'll figure it out. Jonathan, <laughs> who is your crush of the week this week? Okay, my camper crush of the week is a TikTok account. And that TikTok account is called Pens Academy. Have you heard of it? No, what is it? Well, it's an account with 203,000 followers. Oh. 1.6 million likes. Yeah, it's a lot. And three videos. <gasps> oh, so they're killing it. And they're not even videos. They're photo slideshows. So let me let me just tell you a little bit of what this is about. It's basically like a story about this pen academy. They're little gel pens and each color is a different character. And it's written out in like a little comic strip. So there's the first episode, which has 12.2 million views. Oh, so is it like a little storyline with the pens and they're like fighting in school? Yes. I love, I love stuff like this. I, I know. And I like really fell down the rabbit hole. I mean, the rabbit hole did not go far enough for me. So I, I am anxiously anticipating when they come out with part four. There's only three parts out right now. Did you follow? Yeah, of course I followed. Of course. And I have that little bell notification turns on. Um, so you have the popular girls at the school, which is like the pinks and the purple pens. And then you have the popular boys who are the blues and the greens, the nerds who are the reds and the yellows and the orange. And then there's the new girl who's light pink. And light <sighs> pink is... New girl energy. Is new girl energy. It and is. she's the one we're following. So obviously. Oh, it's her story. It's her story. Oh, it's Mean Girls. It's essentially, yeah. So obviously the popular girls kind of suck her into their group before mm. she even has a chance. A tale as old as time. Put this in the homework grading category. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So she kind of gets sucked into the drama of of the popular girls. And they they were nice at first. Mm. But Hot Pink was dating um, Dark Blue. And then there was a little trouble in paradise with these little gel pens. In episode one? In episode one or two, maybe. Okay, so it's still forming. Yeah. So, and also, um, no spoilers. I suggest everybody go check it out and check out season one that's already out there. I don't remember how I came across this, but it was really refreshing because right now, my For You page is a lot of like TikTok shop and a lot of like 
um, like the same types of videos that I'm kind of just like getting tired of, you know? Um, so this, I feel like it's like a little reading moment for me. And it really just reminds me of when I would make my friends make stupid videos or when I would write stupid stories that didn't really make sense. A lot of plot holes at one point during part three, the girl at the beginning, she's like, this is the new hot pink because I lost the other pen <laughs> at school. I was like, oh, this is like, a, like a, a girl. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just reminds me of, you know, the reason that the internet was invented and, and the reason Al Gore invented the algorithm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I, I've been really into stuff like that too lately, like reading accounts like yeah, that. Yeah, like what was the um, Slovenian family? Like the uh, the little animals, the animal yeah. figurines that have like the crazy, those ones are kind of crazy. There's like a million accounts of those and it's very Pen15, but. You know yeah. what you know what I'm loving right now too, like reading accounts is like that trend on TikTok where um people do like their hunger games and they they pick each category for like you know how like in hunger games each what do they call it's like the cities oh the district the districts how have their own thing like agriculture and yeah. they'll put like who's like they'll put like, random celebrities like i remember like agriculture they had like the corn kid oh yeah and like something else it's funny like the miners they had like the seven dwarfs it's just I'm, oh cute these are actually the most basic of ones that were written because there yeah, were some the, really creative ones but i'm, I'm saying it that bad. was a good example for for us to visualize yeah but they were but i'm not being clever and those because that's their job that yeah. was their video they were being clever i'm just regurgitating it poorly um but i like to read those but yeah. yours seems a little bit more structured it's fun it's dumb and i'm just i'm hooked it reminds me a lot of um most popular girls in school uh-huh which was the um the show with the barbies which i was absolutely obsessed with I well that was every episode funny that was really funny yeah. on youtube yes that was funny yeah yeah so that is my cam crush of the week what are you crushing on i'm crushing on um my fake tree oh, okay artificial christmas trees i'm here to tell you that this is a good move for your living room real trees are hard we don't talk about that enough yeah what are we really gaining from them work it's a lot of work it's like oh you gotta water them they're dropping needles they can catch on fire you know who's not doing that who miss artificiala mm. and they've been getting a lot better lately we purchased our christmas tree this year from home depot we got the seven and a half foot ashton balsam fir christmas tree it was a little pricey i think she was 500 dollars, which is a lot actually for a fake tree but let me tell you She's going to go the long way. The, we're going to have her for years. Years to come. So full. I can't even see the center stick. I really can't. They Three parts, they clip into each other, pre-lit. You got different light settings. I like a traditional like white light, like a soft white. Yeah. You like a color light? No, 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 no. I don't mind. No. I'm getting more, more flexible. I used to hate that. Now I'm a little more flex with my color lights. No, I don't like especially the ones that's on this tree. The purples and the blues. A little too icy. They look mm. horrendous. I okay. I think you're being a little a little grinchy right now, a little scroogey. No, I'm great. I love the white light. The white light is beautiful. It's I classic. Also, I miss like the bulbs of yesteryear, like from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and today. Like the glass bulbs that were painted. Well, those were flammable. And yeah, they lead. Yeah. Oh my God. And yeah. we used to store those in a in a cardboard box uh -huh. broken every year i would like throw i remember i would throw them in a trash bag and i would like throw them in the thing and the next year my dad would be like why are these all broken i'm like i don't know it seems like a lot of throwing was happening a lot of throwing was happening tantrums all of it mm. anyway well i just feel like we invested in a good tree this year and like before that i had this like 70 dollar target tree and it wasn't bad but i will say year after year she looked a little bit more tired a little bit more weathered and like that worked for me for a while, but I just, I'm really obsessed with this new tree that we have. Yeah. Have you guys ever heard of Balsam Hill? Uh, should we? Yeah. This, I, I, I this is, so, yeah. So pretend that you haven't heard of it. No, I haven't. So Balsam Hill is the official Christmas tree of the Hallmark movies. Oh my God. Full circle. Hallmark. I, I know every Christmas tree in a, in, in a Hallmark movie is a Balsam Hill. Those are very expensive and those even go up to like a thousand dollars. I don't know if I like those though. I kind of feel like 500 is my max to spend on a tree and this tree better last at least like five, 
years, 10 years. Yeah. I don't know. Well, 10 years, I'm, that'd be awesome. If it doesn't, like, okay, whatever. But I just feel like the Balsam Hills, they're, like, so expensive and they're supposed to look really real, but they look a little bare. And I need my tree to look, I need my tree to look full. And that's why I'm so impressed with this one. It looks yeah. really full. It does. It looks full. That was, so, and also last year's that we threw out, lest we forgot Tinseltown, Tinselgate. Uh, well, that was, that was on me. No, but so let me just think about how people who do tinsel on their trees, their artificial trees, like, are you putting it away with the tinsel on it? How are you getting all that off? I think if you strategically place it, you can strategically remove it. That's so much. That's too much. It's too much. But this year is the year that we've really decorated a lot for Christmas. And I just feel better about it. I've always been so lazy, like put in the effort get go to the dollar store go we got great deals at michael's this year i got garland yeah. for 15 dollars, and it's so full and it's so robust like and the thing is with christmas <laughs> stuff guys we yeah, got robust thing is with christmas stuff you guys is it's it's you accumulate it over time you don't get everything in one year maybe this is the year that you spend ten dollars on the wreath Okay. Michael's has a fabulous wreath creating station. I've never seen that before. They have all these little bins that you can like make your own wreath and like jazz them up with little treats and trick kits. Oh my God. Like real housewives. It's very, yeah, it's very fun. So like this year we bought for the podcast studio, this lovely little squirrel. Let me, let me pull her out. She's, um, she's wicker, maybe hay. Um, she's got fake snow. On. I, I think it's fun. Very campy. Don't you think campers? Oh, what should we name her or him? Um, or them? I think it's a, he. I think it's a he. Should we invite the comments? Yeah. Can you name our Christmas squirrel? And you can go, you guys can decide on the gender. We won't decide. It's not for us to decide. Yeah. Let us know what you think. It's giving me boy, but it could be giving you girl and that's fine. Princess girl needs a new, um, camp friend. We also got this little tree. If you can see it on camera, it sucks. Um, the base of it isn't flat it's like rounded so it doesn't really stand straight but they're great they're great little christmas tchotchkes for the house also we did on monday put wow. out a patreon video where we had a couple of glasses of wine and we did a little tour around we haven't really shown that much of our house and we gave a little a little corner tour we talked about our favorite christmas ornaments and it was it was a fun silly video yeah and we showed the um the, the wreath and the garland the gingerbread houses we made too oh yeah who do you, okay, if you haven't seen the video, say to yourself out loud, campers, who do you think had the better looking gingerbread house? Counselor Jonathan or me, Counselor Zachariah? You guessed it. Counselor Jonathan's was perfect and mine was a disaster. You were just so, and I, I'm not even being petty about it. You're just so good at all that kind of stuff. You're good at like bowling. You're good at golf. You're good at gingerbread house. So you're, you're like just, you're naturally good at everything. Thank you. Say something nice to me now. You're really good. <laughs> I'm, just kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. We're not just going to give you a, a compliment in return because then that diminishes the compliment. We literally will lay in bed at night and you'll turn to me and say you haven't complimented me today. Well, if you haven't done it, you got to do it before we go to bed. That's the rule. <laughs> well, campers, I just am really into Christmas trees and I just, I think it's fun. I love to hear what everyone's doing. And even if you are a real tree person, I think I'm just jealous. I think I'm just jealous that I can't do that because I'm not um, good enough at taking care of things like that. I have seen this thing. I can't get it off my mind. For real Christmas tree purchasers, they have this, it's, it's actually kind of expensive. It's like $100 on Amazon. Um, it's a fake Christmas. It looks like a present and you open up the top of it and you fill it with water and there's a little tube that snakes out of the back of it and you put it under a tree and it's like a reserve for the water. Oh, so you don't have to water it as much. And it looks like a, a little present. Gift. Oh, wow. That's I know. such a good idea. I know. It's, it's so clever. And the one I saw, my aunt, my, my, my aunt, my cousin got it and she posted it on, um, on Facebook and she was like, look how cool this is. Hers was a hundred dollars. It might be cheaper ones, but what a great idea. That's right? a great idea. I know. So just, I guess my question of the week is just Christmas trees. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Silver bells. It's Christmas camp songs at the campground. You sound like Jerry. From Golden Bachelor. Oh. Is it Jerry my. or Gary? It's Gary. It's spelt like Jerry. And he loves Leslie. And he's stringing Teresa on. He does not call her Teresa. He calls her Teresa. Teresa. Tr I really care for Teresa. She's so warm and inviting. But there's just something about Leslie's Punani that's got <laughs> me addicted. It's tsunami. Oh, that's Tsunami Punami. Okay, guys, this is not Golden Bachelor recap. This is <laughs> Camp Songs. 
part of the show where we share songs with you that we've been singing all week. Um, and they're not Christmas based. I just wanted to have a segue. No, I don't Are think we're Christmas? ever gonna do. No, I don't think we're ever gonna do Christmas based because I mean, people are no. gonna listen to it shuffle on year round. There's only one Christmas song I would consider adding. If it's if it's that stupid one from Sia, I'm gonna flip. It's not from Sia, but what it is it? stupid. I'm not gonna tell you because it might be a Christmas. It might be on the playlist at some point. I don't know. I'm I thinking about it. I love my favorite Christmas song, but I'm not telling you mine because you're not telling me yours. Okay, then then we'll, we'll talk about sit later. in silence. Well, yeah, we'll sit in silence. Jonathan, just let's wrap it up. What is your song of the week? I'm gonna wrap it up like a gift under Ooh. a tree, but it's not a real gift. It's a water reservoir. Oh, what is it? What is it? My camp song is "World on Fire" by Dolly Parton. Oh, liar, liar, world on fire. What you gonna do when it all burns down? I like that one. That's her new one, right? Yes, her album "Rock Star" just came out. If you're listening to this in real time, and um, I was curious to see like what kind of music would be on it because she did a lot of promo for it. And actually, so back in 2022, she was nominated to be in the um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But she was like, hey, like, I'm, I wouldn't classify my music as like rock or rock and she's roll. She's so traditional. So far. Yeah. And she's like, I don't really have a rock and roll vibe to me. So let me come out with an album that does. Don't you feel like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is like less about rock and more about just like music excellence? Because like Missy Elliott got it too. And it's like, mm-hmm. she's not rock at all, but like mm-hmm. she's music excellence. And I think that's really what it is. But like Dolly's just an older woman from a different generation. So she's looking at it as like, I need to be pure rock for this award. And she did. And I think it's so fun, especially like- She's the best. Like- her, like late in her career when she's like let me just change it up and have like fun with it and she just did the Cowboys game and she was dressed like the Cowboys cheerleader and everybody loved it oh my god she had that little like silk chiffon sheer little diamond crested moment her body is sitting right I'm over here looking like job of the hut lava lamp body shape and she's over there looking like a hot little ticket <laughs> I wish I looked that good in a Dallas Cowboys cheerleading outfit she's 78 so it's like a rock song for the first two minutes and four seconds and then it kind of shifts into uh, you can't stop the beat uh, from Hairspray, a la Nikki Blonsky. Oh, friend of the pod. Yeah, it actually like really sounds very similar to that song. Uh, I don't so think so, but you keep saying that. Did Did you listen to the whole thing? Yes, you made me. Literally two two minutes and four seconds into it, there's a shift. Oh, maybe I a, didn't. Then. A bridge, some may say. I like how it's her version of rock. It's really like rock light. Yeah. And she's it's a lot of covers. There's a lot of songs on there. It's like over two hours. Can I read you some of the um, It's over two hours? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, she really went for it. So she does a lot of collaborations, and I'm gonna read just a couple. Okay. Just a couple of the people who are on this album. Sting, Steven Tyler, Peter Frampton, Joan Jett, and the Black Hearts. She got them all back together. Debbie Harry, Pink, Brandy Carlisle, Pat Benatar, Leonard Skinner, so much more. Was Cheryl Crow on there? Uh, yeah. Yes, she was. Mm, my favorite. Yeah. So the album has 30 songs and it is her 49th solo album. She is a whirlwind. Yeah. She's got quite the discography there. But um, but I'm just, I'm enjoying the song. I'm glad we got something fun and fresh because I love Dolly Parton, but some of her newer stuff I haven't been vibing with. And this one, I feel as though I do. Well, with 49 albums, you can't win them all, but this seems Very to true. be a winner here. Yeah. Okay. So what's your camp song? My song is Feather by Sabrina Carpenter. Okay. Her second entry on my side of the playlist. Sabrina Carpenter is a girl's girl. She is single-handedly saving pop. Um, I think she's just really doing it like how it needs to be done. I feel like the music industry has been kind of... I, ever since COVID, been really shifting to like sad singer-songwriter music. And you know me. You guys know me. I love that. But what I also really love is like a good pop diva. And I feel we haven't had a new pop diva in a while. Like COVID brought us like we had Dua Lipa's like whole phase. Yes. Like we had Chromatica. We've had like Beyonce and Taylor Swift. But who's the new pop age? Who is it? Right? I really believe it's Spring Carpenter. Yeah. And this song, Feather, is just, it's so fun. It's about like cutting ties with a toxic relationship and feeling lighter as a result of that. And the music video is just so great. It's like her looking all sexy, like beating up men, literally actually killing men and just being like, fuck these guys. I'm I'm in control of my life. And it's really crazy campers. The video was actually filmed 2.1 miles away from our apartment. How cool is that? I like like stuff like that. Yeah, it was in Williamsburg, right? Yeah. Yeah, she filmed it in Brooklyn for some random reason. You know about the drama? 
What? Well, yeah, I want you to tell them about the drama. So she films this music video, and it was in a church. And the uh, I think it was the priest who was working there at the time mm. ended up getting fired after the music video came out because it didn't like correlate with the archdiocese and what they they want in line for things that are going to be filmed there. But they did ask to film there, and the shot list was presented. I just don't I don't know where it wasn't carried out because she's wearing. Um, a scandalous outfit. I don't think it's that scandalous, but it's it is in a charge. It's yeah, but listen, if you had any reservations about this, why would you let her do that? Like, it's a pop star is recording a, a music video, and in, uh, in it's a music video. What do you think? She's sitting in a pew praying. Like, yeah, be real. What did you expect she was going to do? Yeah. So the guy got fired, and it, it's there's a whole lot of drama going on at that church. It's like Saint Saint Carmel, I think. Uh it's saint it's not saint carmel it's like oh, saint it something irish something something but there's a lot of drama going on because of sabrina carpenter but that music video is still out there and it's not going anywhere yeah it came out like three weeks ago she also wasn't like in the eyes of what happened wasn't in the wrong from being like we presented you with what we were doing and also like there's people who are there when you're filming you know it's not just like here are the keys to the church you go ahead and let yourself in and film and stuff like people from the church are there while you film to make sure like people aren't burning the place down a hundred percent so someone watched for sure yeah so and they were like dancing they're like hey this is pretty cool mm -hmm. it's a good song it's a great song great choice i like the lyric in the course which says your signals are mixed you act like a bitch you fit every stereotype send a pic it's cool she's currently opening up for taylor swift and the south american leg of her tour and these venues are insane and she walks around the stage with like no fear so powerful and i that's going to be so intimidating the stages in south america are like they look significantly bigger than the stadiums in the u.s yeah because like when she plays argentina she's not playing like all these different cities she's playing like one city three nights so it's like mm -hmm. these Everybody. are like insane venues and she's walking on the stage doing her choreography having fun and looking like a badass pop star and she's been dropping bop after bop and she's just so cool so I'm a huge fan. Um, Feather by Sabrina Carpenter. You told me a little piece of information. What? You told me a fun fact that shocked me. What? Where she's from. Oh, she's from Quakertown, Pennsylvania. How far, how far is that from you? From my parents' house, probably like 15 minutes. You love to say 15 minutes. Maybe. Well, it depends on how fast you're driving. Are you in a go-kart? Are you in a golf cart? Well, how fast are you driving? Not at all right now yeah oh <laughs> god no yeah pa really pumps them out there too yeah christina aguilera pink alicia oh my god that's our blonde army yeah. all three mm -hmm. wow we need our fourth horseman yeah so if you guys want to listen to our songs you can listen to it for free on spotify we have the playlist linked below um or in the show notes as well as for free on youtube Thank you for listening, campers, and thank you for being a part of this fun little community. Um, we'll see you next week, and if you haven't, please rate the episode. Um, five stars, leave us a little review. They're so fun to read. You can check out Patreon. We just dropped a new episode there this week. Um, and if not, we'll see you next week. We fucking love you. Happy holidays, and with that being said, Lights, lights out, out, campers. campers.